We've never seen a case company launch with this many SKUs at the same time, but Fractal has its new pop case out that we're reviewing today. This one, although we have another we're going to be getting, and they have a lot of different color variations. That's the main gimmick for this one. So the new Fractal Pop $90 case comes in a few different sizes, and it has a total of 14 SKUs that Fractal told us about. But when we started counting it on our own, this one chassis design actually has about 20 SKUs, 20 different variations, and that's because of the color variants, plus there's XL, Nano, and Standard, and then there's also Silent and Airflow, and we think they're trying to compete with this, the Heightwise 60. So Fractal's new $90 Pop, including the Pop Air and Silent, with its color variations on the bench for review today. Let's see how it does. Before that, this video is sponsored by Linode. Linode is a Linux server hosting provider that GN has used for nearly a decade now for its own servers. Alongside dedicated website hosting, Linode makes it easy to cut out third-party VPN services to build your own VPN that you fully control, easily configured via the interface. Linode also has hundreds of guides for custom servers, including game server apps like Rust, Minecraft, CSGO, and guides to host your own video calling servers to eliminate third parties. Linode is a great way to take back control of software and your hosting, and Gamers Nexus viewers get a $100 credit for 60 days on new accounts at linode.com gamersnexus or click the link below. So today we are working on reviewing mostly the Pop Air RGB. There's the non-RGB version too. Performance should be identical with the RGB variant. It's basically just a color change. And our options uh, were white, black, cyan, magenta, orange, and green for the color accents on the cases. We went with, we have a silent version here of the pop and uh, obviously white for this one. And then we went with cyan for this one. So Fractal sent it over. This option matches our colors a little bit, but in terms of performance, the, the color does not in fact make it colder just because it's blue, so. Okay, so here it is. The color is a bit unusual. And whenever a company does different colors for their cases, it tells us they're a little more committed to the design than typically because Basically, a black case and white for the most part, those will sell probably upwards of 90% of the units depending on the case design. So color historically has not done much other than add additional complexity, like with the old NZXT Phantom cases. So we start seeing it make a comeback with the Y60. It's really cool to see that because you get some different variations in the mix. And for this one, Fractal's basically done a couple of accents throughout the case. So you have a matte paint internally, for the cyan or magenta or whatever color you go with. And then uh, externally, there's a couple highlights, but they, they really haven't gone too heavy with it. So you can see the motherboard frame has got this matte cyan or blue color. There's some blue on the legs for the case down here. Now these are not paint as far as we can tell, it's actually blue plastic. So we took a knife and we did a big gouge in one of these feet. And the end result is that it didn't chip off. So it is actually just, blue all the way through. On the top, there's blue for the I.O. Unfortunately, there's also a blank plug labeled USB-C with no USB-C. So either you could view it as they're shipping you an incomplete case that you have to then pay $10 extra later to complete, or you could view it as they're passing on the savings to you. But just something to be aware of. It is, it's labeled. If you look at the photos, you'll see USB-C there. It doesn't come with it. That's separate purchase. So in terms of the other stuff, performance-wise, it comes with the same three fans you're seeing here. It's got two 120s in the front, one 120 in the rear. We have all the thermal and noise tests coming up a little bit later, as usual, with different configurations, including a frontless configuration. Uh, and then, this is so dangerous. The front has this thing on it. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And uh, it's got this hex design panel on it for the air model, which is what we're looking at today, um, as opposed to the silent model over here. Texturally, the silent model has, or well, just I guess the front panel on it anyway, has this interesting almost, almost wrap-like texture. It feel, if you have a Google Stadia controller, and you don't, because nobody bought those, then it feels like that. Does that help? I hope so. 
Probably not. Someone's writing a comment right now saying that they feel personally attacked about their Stadia purchase. So this case, the mid tower we're reviewing, uh, fit and finish is up to fractal standard for the most part. We have a couple comments we'll be making, especially up here later on. But you can see the color goes all the way to the back. And for the front mesh panel, Fractal used a new hexagon and triangle pattern combined with a very Corsair-y triangular ventilation pattern elsewhere in the case. We liked it when Corsair did it, and we like it here too, although we wish Fractal hadn't chosen to randomly fill in some of the triangles. It's subtle, but it's hard to unsee. It's like a less extreme version of the Corsair 220T Airflow's front panel. In general, the case looks less flashy and more business-like than the Meshify 2 line, which is why we would gravitate more towards the colorful variants. Now to the interesting part, the five and a quarter base. This case can fit two of them. That's very rare at this point. It comes with this nice little secret compartment you can put stuff in, uh, or you can put two optical drives there. So that makes it, a little unique because right now to get two optical drives we checked and the newest stuff that we've reviewed that makes sense for it would maybe be a fractal defined 7 xl which is large or something like a be quiet dark base pro 900 v2 that would also fit optical drives the door is designed to open with a fabric pull tab although it got knocked off pretty much every single time we picked up the case and to fill the rarely used space fractal has installed what looks like but is definitely not an ashtray in one of the slots. It fit in perfectly with the supercomputers of the 70s. This tray could be used for storing screws, but we'd caution against the temptation because transporting at once and forgetting their presence might result in a bad spill. Installing an optical drive eats up a lot of space under the power supply shroud, and it requires removing one of the hard drive brackets. But it's possible to have one optical drive and one three and a half inch hard drive under the shroud at the same time. Shorter five and a quarter devices like LCDs might fit without removing anything. It just depends on what it is. Opening the magnetic door every time you want to get your DVD drive or your fan controller is annoying, obviously, but that's a familiar problem from the optical drive days of yore and something we've encountered many times, just not recently. Three and a half inch support is limited to two drives because only two brackets are included, but as usual with fractal cases, you can purchase an additional bracket up to three total supported, and these brackets can each hold one three and a half and one two and a half inch drive simultaneously. Two mounts are located under the shroud and one behind the motherboard tray at the front of the case. So we immediately run into also the limitations of optical drives on cases and mostly why they went away. If you look at this, because of the presence of optical drive support, the entire front bottom of the case down here, it's, it's useless because it's all caging for that stuff. And so there's nothing really else for Fractal to do with this except for extend the power supply shroud all the way to the front because they have no other use for that space except for making visible the ugly caging for hard drives or optical drives. So that's why they've run it up front. Now, we have always had issues with power supply shrouds because they, uh, they're problematic for cooling performance of a GPU. You pretty much always have better performance without the shroud here, but it's a trade-off of hiding your cables, uh, sacrificing a couple of degrees. Sometimes it's a lot worse if you're running a micro ATX case, for example, or like the nano version of this, where the shroud is suddenly within an inch or two of the GPU. That's bad, especially when you're in the era of three-slot GPUs, because now it's effectively the same as pushing it right up against the glass. So they have their downsides, and that's one of the criticisms we've had of these for a long time. But Fractal runs this all the way to the front, and because of that, you end up with unusable mounting space at the front of the case where those fans are, which means if we pull these radiators out, you'll see the limitations. So the maximum limitation of the radiator support, that was ambitious, is uh, 280 millimeters on the front. This is a 240 rad, and there is sufficient clearance to get it tubes oriented down. But if you look in here, the screw rails here, they stop at the top of the shroud, of course. So this could just barely fit a 360 if that shroud weren't there but then you wouldn't have the optical drive support, so it's sort of one or the other. Whether or not it was a worthwhile sacrifice, for the most part, um, a lot of cases already cut the shroud short and run a 360, so this at least makes Fractal a little more unique, and we think that is worth doing for some design variants in the market. Now, putting a 240 in here, you can do up top, but this is about the maximum size. They really stop short on pulling the top radiator mount forward. You can see if we look at the top of the case, up here it stops very early. They don't bring it all the way out. 
And so it does mean that the chance of having an accidental incompatible set of two radiators is very low, so that's nice, but it also severely restricts how much you can put in the case. And if you look at this, this thing doesn't even have fans on it right now, and we're already running very close to the motherboard, which is largely the reason that they cut this short, because going up in size to like a 280 or something, you're going to run right up against the board, and that'll be a problem for VRM heat sinks. So component clearance prevents the installation of 280mm top radiators, and Fractal has included an offset mounting kit to make it easier to fit 240 models. This mounting kit came in its own bag with its own instructions, which really makes it look like a last minute addition or afterthought to correct an error. Now as for cable management, we didn't have any trouble with cable storage, but that's because we didn't install any three and a half inch or five and a quarter inch drives. Every inch of the pop air is covered in optional mounting locations, and using them means more cables and fewer places to put them. The one place where we did run into a problem was with the cutout under the very bottom rear corner of the motherboard which is partially obstructed by an ATX power supply. Now for IO on this, they didn't go too minimalistic like we see sometimes where it starts to actually just get incredibly annoying. Uh, in this one, there's two USB 3.0 ports on the top, type A. There's a microphone and a headphone, three and a half millimeter jack, an RGB adjust that you could rewire if you wanted to, power obviously, and then the unfortunately blanked out USB Type-C connector. Now these run a little expensive. We actually did a factory tour of one of these factories in the past, and they uh, hand wire all of the wires into the header, which is part of why it's so expensive. So unfortunate, that is an extra $10 if you want to buy it. They actually have a whole list of extra add-ons you can buy. So there's a GPU mounting kit if you want to get a vertical GPU in there. That $46. It turns the $90 case into $130, $140 case. You're very close to just getting, even from Fractal, a uh, torrent compact, which is better, like a lot better. So probably not worth there. Also, unless you're water cooling the GPU, it will run fairly hot in this small of a box anyway. So we wouldn't recommend that. They also sell a few other things. So that They've got a hard drive tray kit for $8. They have an SSD bracket kit for $8 the USB kit for $10 and sort of nickel and diming their way back into charging you more for a case, basically. But these days, sadly, 80, uh, which is the floor price for the non-RGB one, and $90 cases are not nearly as common as they used to be. But there are still a lot of competitors, and we're gonna be looking at those today, too. Now, for other small features, it has a dust filter for the power supply, not the highest quality one. The plastic that forms it is large and obstructs much more space than it really needs to or has any business doing. Fortunately, power supplies for the most part, uh, this is going to be sufficient for them to breathe. It is not particularly uh, expensive in the way it's all assembled and built. As you can see, we've now popped out the filter that was supposed to be permanently attached. Oops. Uh, so it's okay. It's fairly standard. Magnetic dust filter on the top, fairly standard. If you run exhaust on the top, this you really don't need it at that point. You can take it off and save yourself fractions of a degree, maybe one degree Celsius reduction. And then the front does not have a filter, but this is a good thing because uh, for, we gotta take the ashtray out, and then we can take the front panel off. So this, as you can see, uh, no additional dust filtration in here. They are using these very fine um, mesh materials these days in a lot of cases, like the Fantex series cases really popularized this and then Fractal is now jumping on board with it as well, where instead of using the larger steel mesh and then putting an additional dust filter behind it, they just do the ultra fine mesh and this is much better. We've tested these with uh, a larger mesh, a dust filter, sometimes they do two dust filters. We've tested them like this with and without dust filters. This always performs best because you are blocking the least amount of air because as soon as you put a dust filter behind it, you now have, like if you imagine this on it, you now have the metal forming the mesh holes on the filter lining up with the holes for the actual mesh behind it for the front of the case, and that blocks airflow. Uh, and it really doesn't help with dust control when the holes are as fine as this. So that's a good thing. Okay, enough of my part. We're going to go to Patrick for a little bit to talk about some of his thoughts on the case. He especially has thoughts on RGB LEDs. Whenever I run into a project where we need to start wiring RGB LEDs, I go get Patrick to do it, not because he likes doing it, but because I hate doing it, and he, and I can ask him to do it for me. 
So uh, anyway, we're going to ask him what he thinks about LEDs. Because this is the Pop Air RGB, uh, the Cyan model, one of 20 SKUs, there is an RGB controller in here. It's included with the I.O. It's tucked in right here. It's just a little 5-volt, 3-pin ARGB header uh, that you can hook your daisy-chained fans into. And uh, that is all of the RGB in the case other than the power button up here. So we can plug it in and turn it on. I can hold this RGB control button here to change modes. And then I can quick tap it to cycle through. Uh, but you might notice as I'm cycling through here that I have rainbow, I have these two colors here, these two colors, these two colors. I don't have any solid cyan option. Uh, this is fading through different colors here. So this case comes in cyan, magenta, uh, green, and orange. And we don't have solid color options for any of that. So when I was building this, I, I wanted to set it up so that when Andrew came in to film it later, it would match the colors and look like all the renders that are online, but I wasn't able to do that. So if you do want to match these fans to the case interior, you can, as usual, you know, just plug these this header here into your motherboard and sync it through your RGB software of choice. But we'd like to see a baked in color that actually matches the case for these fractal pop air RGB units. So the stock fans front and back are Aspect 12 120 millimeter RGB fans. Uh, these should be identical to the non-RGB fans that are in the silent models and the non-RGB air models. Um, they're rated for 1200 RPM. Uh, when I was running the tests, you know, uh, it looked like that was about accurate. These uh, spun a little fast. So taking a look in here, you can see these fans are mounted right on the front of the chassis against the front panel. They did that probably to get the LEDs to come through really clear. You know, there's nothing in the way of them. You can see them very clearly. We usually like to see the fans mounted back inside the chassis. Uh, that gives them a better chance to pull air in across the full surface area of the mesh rather than just the area right in front of them. It shouldn't matter too much. In this instance, I'd like to see them inside the chassis as well, just because it makes it a lot easier to access the screws. Getting in here with the screwdriver once all the system is built in here is pretty difficult. So taking a look at the other side here, these fans each have 500 millimeter cables on them, uh, which normally would be perfectly adequate. But the way the cutouts are placed here, um, the stock cable routing makes it so that the fan cables are just a little short to reach all areas of the motherboard. The fans can be daisy chained together and it seems like maybe that's what Fractal wants you to do. Uh, we plugged in a fan extension here just because these cables can't quite reach at the bottom. Uh, this would be kind of asking a lot to get into headers at the bottom edge here. That covers the fans and LEDs, and uh, I'll throw it back to Steve to finish out the build section. A couple of other small things in here before we jump into the thermals and the noise for this. So side panel attachment is simple and secure. It uses captive screws. We'd like to see a handle on the glass side panel, like the one on the metal panel, just to help avoid fingerprints because they get everywhere. But that's a relatively minor issue. The front panel can theoretically be pulled off with uh, handle on the bottom, but as you saw, it's a little difficult sometimes. It makes sense at this price point overall, but this thing, it just doesn't compare well to the hinged easy access doors and removable radiator brackets we've seen on some of the other fractal cases higher up in price point. As it is though, it's difficult to access the screws for the stock fans with the system built in the case, and the accessibility overall is somewhat limited just by the nature of the design, especially accommodating the five and a quarter base. Now for some thermal tests. Stock thermal testing has been a weak point for some fractal cases in the past, even the Meshify models when they've been undersupplied with stock fans, although you could fix that. The Pop, the non-mini and the non-XL, comes with a reasonable set of three stock fans, which may be enough to solve that problem. Our torture test is a full system CPU and GPU load, showing just some fractal cases first, this workload raised the CPU temperature to 47 degrees Celsius above ambient, which dropped to 43 degrees when we removed the front panel. The Pop Air's single layer of mesh sans backing filter allows this result that shows relatively low obstruction by the panel. 
the Torrent remains a clear and obvious leader, especially in price, with the MeshFi 2 Compact performing mostly similarly to the Pop Air RGB. On to the comparative charts. Assuming the Pop goes on sale for the stated $80 to $90, there's not much in our current lineup of favorites that can be considered a direct competitor. Prices have risen. The 4000D Airflow is currently $105 in most listings, while the P400A Digital is $110. Both are competitive, but obviously more expensive. The NDXE H510 Flow and the Montec X3 Mesh are the closest semi-recent matches to the Pop Air's price and market, but we'll use the more expensive H7 Flow for comparison instead, because the H510 Flow kind of sucks and we weren't big fans of it. The X3 averaged 47 degrees in this test, tied with the Pop Air, while the H7 Flow was slightly warmer at 48 degrees. The pop is above average overall. In the same torture test, the average GPU temperature was 57 degrees above ambient, which dropped slightly to 56 degrees with the removal of the front panel. Not enough to be outside the margin of error, but a little bit of movement. Both the front and the back of the case are well ventilated, but the full length power supply shroud is what's limiting the cooling potential here at the bottom of the case where the GPU really needs it. The X3 pulled ahead here with a 52 degree average, but its claim to fame is that it comes with six stock fans, so high performance should be expected. As a sacrifice, the X3's overall build quality is far inferior to Fractal's, so where it makes up some room in thermals, it loses ground elsewhere. The H7 Flow also performed well at 53 degrees above ambient. This is one instance though where installing Fractal's vertical GPU riser could help performance in some situations given the GPU more room to breathe, but it really depends on the size of the video card. As we said earlier, in many situations it could easily make things worse. You'll just have to size it up based on how fat of a video card you buy. The Pop Air's GPU cooling isn't dangerously bad, but among the current wave of high airflow cases, these results are warm, for sure. Some larger fans would help. If you stick around for the standardized fan testing at the end, you'll see some of those results. The average GPU temperature during a GPU-heavy Firestrike Extreme stress test was nearly identical to the original torture test result at 57 degrees. That doesn't place it any higher on the chart, with the X3 and the H7 Flow still beating it at 55 degrees and 52 degrees, respectively. Moving on to the Blender test, rendering our monkey head testing on the CPU resulted in a CPU average of 36 degrees above ambient. That puts the Pop Air back in the saddle within margin of error of the H7 Flow and the X3's tight average of 35 degrees. CPU cooling in the Pop Air is good out of the box. Switching to GPU only rendering for the scene without the CPU doing much of anything, the GPU average was 25 degrees over ambient. The deltas are less extreme here than in the torture test because it's a lighter workload, but the pop air is about 2 degrees warmer than the H7 Flow and the X3, which are nearly tied. Moving to our larger and higher performance set of standardized fans improved thermals across the board, with a new CPU average of 42 degrees, beating the H7 Flow's 44 degree average. The X3 is effectively out of the running without the benefit of its six stock fans, averaging 51 degrees. Remember that standardizing fans is primarily an academic exercise here, but it was one that was highly requested by you all. This is useful when comparing cases where we normalize against one set, but it takes away other fair advantages from cases like the torrent. The GPU average dropped to 52 degrees, closer to the middle of the pack, although the H7 Flow still won here with a 50 degree average. The Montec X3 managed to tie at 52 degrees. If you want a Pop Air RGB, it may make sense to buy a Pop Air and supply some larger RGB fans. With the three stock fans running at 100%, the Pop Air's noise level, as measured with our standardized setup, was 39.4 dBA. That's on par with the H7 Flow. We found that the stock fans in our review unit ran a little faster than the advertised 1200 RPM, typically between 1300 and 1400 RPM, but that's within the normal 10% manufacturing variance. As we mentioned earlier, Fractal is also releasing silent versions of the pop cases, but we probably won't test those in the future. Lowering the case's noise level to 36 dBA for the threshold we use for testing required setting fan speeds to 80% or about 1100 RPM. This reduction is smaller than we usually have to make, and there was little effect on CPU temperature, which climbed to 48 degrees over ambient. It stayed ahead of the H7 Flow's 50 degree average, while the X3 is completely disqualified by virtue of not having adjustable fan speeds at all. The GPU average climbed to an unpleasant 59 degrees over ambient, handily beaten by the H7 Flow's 54 degrees. If you're trying to tune the fan speeds in the pop, keep a careful eye on the GPU temperature, more so than the CPU. That goes double for the less ventilated silent thermals. So wrapping it all up then, first of all, the Pro Air 
is definitely an easy choice for at least one type of user. And that's somebody who wants a five and a quarter bay, in a modern case anyway. This is it. This is about the best five and a quarter bay implementation we've seen basically ever, just because it stopped and so it never advanced. So uh, define seven things like that. Large cases, it's not abnormal for them to have one or to have one you can hack your way into a five and a quarter bay on the case. But this is one of the better ones we've seen, especially on a smaller case that's modern. It's high build quality, modern standards for cable management, things like that. So that's the easy part. Now, in terms of the look, the build quality, and the hardware compatibility, the POP seems like a case that should cost more than $80 these days. Uh, this It looks about right for $80 about three or four years ago. But today, uh, this is higher quality than probably most cases in that $80, $90 range for the, the RGB version are, are able to compete with. So that's a good thing for Fractal. It does put them on better footing than, say, the Montec X3, which is much, much lower build quality, even though it's competitive thermally. Uh, it's also on fairly competitive footing with the H510 Flow, which we don't particularly like anyway. There's just not a lot below $100 these days in cases. So the Landcool 215 used to be a $70 to $80 case. That would be our go-to recommendation in the POPs price point if it were still there. But right now, when we just checked, it was $100. So uh, if Fractal can hold to the MSRP for at least a little while, then the POP error starts to make a lot more sense. If it climbs in price, it's not really competitive enough unless you're looking for the aesthetic specifically, like uh, different colored interiors, things you can't really get elsewhere. That would be its main staying power if the price creeps. So we're definitely not looking forward to the listing chaos that will be created with 20 different SKUs on Newegg or Amazon or wherever. Uh, if you want one of the cases and you don't see it in the stock, probably check one of the other SKU listings because it's going to be a nightmare. In terms of performance, the pop air could definitely do better. The price leaves room to budget for some better fans, so you're able to make it work. A couple suggestions here. So as is the case with most chassis that have uh, top fan ports, if you're doing any cooler really, but especially an air cooler, and you mount a, a couple of fans at the top because you're thinking, well, GN said the thermals could be better. I'm going to add some fans. If you just add two fans to the top and you put one of them up here before the fan for the air cooler, what will happen is the air will come in the front of the case and then it'll leave. It's never going to hit the cooler, so it won't really make it better. What you could do, though, is either replace the fans with higher quality ones or you could add a fan just in the top rear as exhaust. That would make sense. Uh, or you could put it in the top front as intake. There's no reason you can't do that. Uh, you might want to do both as intake, and then you've basically got a really strong positive pressure setup, and the air is going to come out the back, including these holes down here where it's heavily ventilated in the PCIe slot and near the GPU. So that may be something to look into if you want to build one of these cases. It would help get some more air through the system. Historically, NZXT has been one of Fractal's closest competitors. Same for Fantex, really, at least now with the designs they're doing today. Hopefully, NZXT will launch a sub H7 tier case sometime soon that isn't the H510 flow. But for now, the H7 is sort of the, the main competitor from NZXT. Fantax, you should look at the P400A. The big thing there, though, it's a competitive case. And thermally, it does very well. But the P400A is an ancient case, like tooling internally. And you notice it. So uh, this overall, we'd say, is sort of in that group of cases where we recommend it right now at the $80 to $90 price class. It's pretty rare. And uh, if Fractal can hold, then they're in a good spot. As soon as it jumps to $100, though, our recommendation shifts to be you should look at the other cases on the market because there's a lot of them at 100 to 110 right now. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. As always, subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to help us out directly. You can grab one of the mouse mats like I have on the table here in front of me for a desk-sized mousing service. We have them in blue and black and red and black with fully custom in-house designs and a lot of effort going into things like the custom color rubber underside, the stitching at the borders, things like that. Or patreon.com slash gamersnexus where you can get a bonus post for some behind the scenes updates, what we're working on right now. I wrote a big one up and posted it the other day. So thank you for watching and supporting. We'll see you all next time.